Hey, how's it going everybody? Unmol here. So I just want to make a video uh, recapping this week's trades. So, you know, earnings season is now phasing out. Um, earnings season is when, you know, stocks gap up, gap down, and you get a lot of opportunity based on the earnings report to do some trades. So uh, we had, a, you know, a phenomenal earnings season in the live traders chat room uh, all the way here in the market. You had this massive rally recently right over here. For every pullback, it's just a very shallow pullback and it keeps going higher. And this obviously created a really good environment for day trading. And uh, we really crushed it. You know, we had an awesome a month in the live trade chat room. Hope some of you guys got a chance to check us out. Uh, but I want to talk about this week. You know, this week, as earnings are phasing out, you're getting a lot less gaps. So there's a smaller gap list, smaller watch list every day. So what I've been focusing on is actually playing the market instead because the market's created a lot of good opportunity. Um, overall, the week's been uh, choppy. You know, I basically was starting every day down a little bit and then working my way back up and uh, Q's have been basically my biggest winner um, this week QQQ which is the ETF for NASDAQ so those of you who are new who don't know what ETFs are they're exchange traded funds they basically trade exactly like stocks right so ETF is just exchange traded funds so QQQ is the ETF for the NASDAQ right so it moves kind of with the NASDAQ or how it moves all right um, so you know Q's ended up making uh, this week overall a profitable week um, and uh, I think every single day I've had a Q's trade that was profitable this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, and uh, you know I want to recap some of the trading. So, you know, first things first, uh, starting off with the market here, we already know to look for a short opportunity, right? <laughs> and why is that? Well, look at the weekly chart. Go to the weekly chart here. You see, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? A little doji candle right on top. Uh, some people call it a hangman or you know it doesn't really matter what you call it but it's like nine green weeks in a row and then you are coming up into you know an area of major resistance right major resistance this area was um, resistance you know right over here right over there was right over here right over here and then right back down we came into that resistance area right so you're gonna expect a red candle there so all right, so the way you think about it is like, you know, think about it as a roulette table, right? If you go to a casino, you see like a, you know, a roulette table and you're you're right over here, right? So ignore my drawing skills, they're not the best, but let's say you're standing here, right? In the casino, watching this roulette table. And all you see on the board is like red, right? Red, 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 red. So let's say nine times in a row you see people were spinning the wheel and it kept on landing on red, right? And it happens nine times. So what's the most likely scenario for the tenth and eleventh time, right? Now it can be a you know it could be a red again, right? But more likely than not, you're gonna try and make a bet on black, right? I mean that's what I would do every single time. If you see like nine or ten reds in a row, you're more likely to say, okay, let's bet on a black, right? Just probability. So same thing here on the market. You had so many green bars in a row that you know you're gonna make a bet that it's gonna come red. So that's what I did. Um, you know we shorted the market literally the high of this whole move right on this day when we gapped up so let me go open up the uh, 15 minute chart so I can show you right over here so see how on this day we gapped up right we gapped up right into um, resistance area so you see this little pivot right over there right so we gapped up right into resistance right at the open literally right at the open I sent out a tweet to our swing trading newsletter members and also the chat room members that okay buy the QQQ March 22nd $175 puts so that's where we ended up buying the uh, puts $175 puts add the money and look at that drop we got like boom tank 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 right we got a straight move down red bars in a row got a bottoming tail and that's where we took half off so as you can see here in our um, let me show you the uh, our private Twitter right right over there if you can see that you know we had bought the puts earlier uh, we got out half at three dollars and sixty cents on this nice little drop uh, whenever we get a quick move down like this where it's like accelerating or right, you should always take some profit so you know like if a stock is going down like this right 45 degree angle I mean it can keep going down forever because that's a power trend it could keep trending forever but when you start just accelerating like this I call it like a waterfall effect right just straight down that's always a good time especially when you're coming into potential support to take some off and that's exactly what we did we covered half of our puts the same day I mean it was supposed to be a swing trade but that was such a quick move and it's almost like you know 
uh, there's a saying I use in the chat room, which is like when the dogs are barking, you, you know, you feed the dogs. So, and especially with options, because when op when stock market falls hard like this, what ends up happening is the volatility, the implied volatility spikes up, right? That causes the options premium to become more expensive because people are fearful. So they end up paying more for puts or they end up paying more and the premiums get expensive. And that's what I call when the dogs are barking, you feed the dogs. We took half off profit here and then we held half position all the way into uh, today, right? Looking for further downside. And then today, right at the morning, we got again a little acceleration to the downside right over here. And we got out of the other position on the QQQ, locking in an overall gain of over. Um, it was about a 95% gain on the second half, right? Overall, including this one and then this one, it was about a 76% about a gain. So you can see here I posted in the morning on the Twitter. Uh, QQQ puts remainder offer out to sell remainder puts at 410 and then we ended up getting out this morning um, right at you know four dollars and ten cents which was about a 95 percent gain uh, from that so you know Q's obviously ended up paying us uh, but these were the swing trades right using options we also day traded it uh, especially on this gap up day we made a good amount of money um, day trading this thing so let me go over to the gap up day so I can show you the pattern so right over here so as a day trade we were looking at it right uh, this thing was starting to form like a, you know, f bear flag right over there. We broke the bear flag to the downside. That's where we ended up buying the puts, but I didn't short it as a day trade. I kept waiting, right? Then I did another rally, dropped again. So what we got was lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. I still didn't, you know, get involved on the short side, but then we waited again. The market rallied back up right into um, the VWAP right over here. So if you remember the uh, VWAP video lesson I have up on YouTube, we got that rally right into VWAP, which was also into this little uh, resistance area, right? So again, look at how combination of things are coming together. We got the this area right over here, which was support, that became resistance, right? We got the VWAP, and then we also have this trend line coming down from here. So this is where we shorted it on a sell setup entry right over here, put our stop loss above it, and then look at what happened. Market made another low, dropped again. I lowered my stop to break even on above this pivot. And then look at what look at what happened. Market just like boom, puked out. We hit our target, made a nice amount of uh, money on that day. And then you know that was it. We just stayed on the sidelines. And then the next day, we shorted the market again. All right, right over here. Right over here right there on a break of this little wedge pattern again shorted it boom straight drop down and that was a profitable trade on the queues so you know basically queues have been where we made uh most of the money in uh this week you know and then on uh on this day too on this day we ended up shorting the queues again right like queues have just been a fantastic trade all along even on this day we ended up shorting the market right over here right there put our stop loss right above and then then comes the lower high lower low again draw your trend line into the trend line then it rallied again into the trend line and right here is where I shorted it put a stop right above and then boom market dropped again and then that was it and all these trades are two to one trades right two to one risk reward this day two to one risk reward that day and uh, it's just been fantastic you know shorting the queues this one I didn't play uh, um, I when I when we got out of this move right over here I mentioned it again to uh, the members in the chat room to watch for a market short again into the VWAP. And look what happened. Rallied back up into the VWAP, got a sell setup again right into the exact same trend line right over here. Now, I know, I know a lot of members traded this one and they caught the second move down also. So, you know, fantastic opportunities all along on the market. And uh, it's just been it's just been fantastic. You know, queues have basically made our whole uh, week. You know, every single day, this day, short for two hours, this day, short for two hours. And then uh, overall on the option side of things using puts, we ended up uh, getting close to like a 95% gain on that. So overall, um, you know, and that's, that's sometimes it's important, you know, to learn various strategies because, you know, sometimes when earnings season slows down, smaller gap list, smaller watch lists, less earnings, not a lot of movers. So on these type of days, it gets important to learn how to like read price action, learn how to read charts, and then that's how you can profit off um, these opportunities. So 
Qs have been a fantastic trade um, all basically all through this. You know, I think all through this, I've traded the market pretty much every single week, and I've probably had like one loser all this while on the markets. So um, we just to go over some other previous trades. I had bought some puts on the market right on this day. Again, we got a couple day decline. Feed the dogs. Took our profits. 956% gain on the options. Then we shorted the market again right over here. The 200 MA dropped another 70% on, on our options. And then I shorted over here and then got out the very next day for like a 10% loss. And then we shorted right over here again. Another 70% decline. So it's just been fantastic. You know, sometimes I do the Qs. Sometimes I do the SPY, which is the Spiders ETF for S&P 500. Uh, you know, I've had good trades on this too. We, I bought puts right over here. Again, look at the resistance level. This is like the easiest trade. These are the trades where, you know, you don't have a lot of risk and you can load up on options, right? So if you know how to trade options or even stock for that matter or ETF, these are the kind of trades where you can really size like big. You know what I mean? Because look at this resistance. Failed here once. All right. So failed here once. Failed here twice. Failed here three times. What's going to happen the fourth time? Maybe it breaks out. But the risk we take as traders is we short right as it touches that level. So then what's our stop loss? Like teeny weeny stop loss, right? If you load up on options here, get like, you know, 50 contracts, 100 contracts. When you get a decline like this, that's 90% gain or higher, depending on what strike price and expiration you chose, right? So these, these are the kind of trades I look for in the market, like extremes. I don't trade the market every single day. Like I didn't trade the market here. I didn't trade the market through this, right? I only trade on extremes. So, for example, some extremes that I traded, well, number one, buy this little engulfing candle, right? Number two, short into this level. You get only a couple day decline, not going lower, cover, take your profit. Short into the 200 MA, got a couple day decline, not going lower, cover, take your profit. Now, extreme level over here, short, right? We took our profit just because... You know, we realize the market overall is still in an uptrend, right? So the last, you want to be nimble. You don't want to hold on to your trades for a while because it's still in an uptrend. You get a couple day decline, couple day decline, couple day decline. And this very well could just be another couple day decline that ends up going higher. So I've been very nimble with the short side and just look for opportunities. So let's say the market bounces here in the next couple days, right? I probably will buy some puts again, looking for like an M top reversal, right? Or if we go lower right over here, which is into the support, I might be tempted in buying it. So, you know, that's how you trade the market. Uh, learning price action, trend line analysis, those are key to determining these trades, um, you know, as I re recapped. And I also want to go over um, this trade right over here, which we shorted, right? Because a lot of people might be wondering, um, you know, why would you, um, why would you short the market or how would you know to short the market, right? Isn't a one minute sell setup entry that you took right over here very aggressive? How did you know to short it? Well, multiple time frame analysis, right? And I think I know Jared made a video on this topic. Um, I think yesterday on multiple time frame analysis, we had a lecture in our room. This is multiple time frame analysis coming together because I want to show you this. So this was a one minute sell setup. We shorted, but let's go over why. Okay, let's open the 65 minute chart here. And why 65 minute chart? Why not 60 minute chart? That's up to you. You can use 60 minute. You can use 65 minute. Doesn't really matter, right? Totally up to you. The reason I use 65 minute chart is because it gives you equal bars, right? From 9.30 to four o'clock, if you calculate, you're gonna get five bars and the last bar is gonna be half a bar. With 65 minute chart, you get equal five or six bars. So the reason we knew to short the market right over there, all right, is if I open up the, uh, actually let me go over the one minute chart over here and the 65 minute chart over there. Okay, so now you look at this uh, QQQ, at that time where I shorted that one minute sell setup, this is what the queues look like, right? Again, if you haven't taken PTS, you probably don't know what this is, but this is what we teach and we call as a sell setup entry, right? When a stock goes down, lower high, lower low, this is probably gonna be a lower high and this is known as a sell setup. So we shorted, so this was already on a 60 minute sell setup, right? right over here. So when it broke down under the 60 minute sell setup, that's when I drilled down into my one minute chart and I found a one minute downtrend line, right? So it rallied into the downtrend line, got a one minute sell setup, which was inside the 60 minute sell setup, right? Which was inside a daily chart hitting resistance. So see how like multiple time frames coming together, daily chart into resistance, 60 minute already created a drop and giving us rally to short sell setup. Then you drill down to your one minute chart you find a tighter entry and a tighter stop 
to get you inside of a 60 minute cell setup, right? And 60 minute cell setup worked, and that's what causes the one minute chart to continue to downtrend. And uh, it's been a fantastic trade all this while Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday pretty much made it money every single day, shorting the queues. So, you know, where do we go from here? Yeah. Right, market recap. Where do we go from here in the market? Well, today the market sold off into a pretty decent area of support, right? Market bounced from here once, bounced here twice, bounced here three times, and now we're back down here. So you could expect a shallow bounce tomorrow, unless, obviously unless, we break down under the support. So a couple things can happen. Number one, we break through support, right? Then we go lower. Great, that would be nice. If you want to get it away into the market short, then here's what you do. Got a lower high, lower low, lower high, got a lower low, right? Got a lower high today, shallow, got a lower low. So now you look for the next rally into this trend line right over here on a 60 minute chart and we look to, you know, short somewhere in here. So maybe tomorrow the market bounces somewhere in this zone, perhaps we can look for a short opportunity for a further move lower. So that's kind of what I think. Um, right now, I have no open positions on the market. I got out of my, all my puts today because you're selling off into 21 EMA, 200 MA, good, you know, three day drop. So good uh, situation to take profits in. So that's that. And all, again, all these tweets are sent right here in our private Twitter account. You can set up text message alerts to get them also if you're not trading all day. So th this is perfect for those who don't day trade every day, right? You can't be in the room every day. You can't day trade every single day, but you still want to participate in the markets and you know make some side income or grow an account. So this is what you do, options and swing trading. So I want to go over another trade we did in the swing trading private Twitter account with the members. ENS, what a beautiful trade, right? And you can see it. The setup is right on your chart. Same thing. Daily chart, weak, drops. We rally up. So lower high, lower low. We got a lower high broke this little trend line on the hourly chart, right? And then r we got a little three bar play situation going on right over here. So that's where we shorted it, ENS in the private Twitter account, right under there, put our stop loss right above here, and then boom, sh no pain, straight red bars down into support, and then today we took our profits on this trade, beautiful trade, right? And if you see the Twitter account, You'll see it here. ENS take half profit off here, and then the rest we took off here, 69.75, and we ended up shorting it like at um, a 73, right? We ended up shorting at 73 dollars and got out at 69. That's about a four dollar move on ENS in what three days, right? Uh, another example. I'm currently, uh, currently I'm short PRLB, similar type of setup, right? Lower high, lower low, lower high, and then I ended up uh, taking a short position on this right over here, right? And then I put my stop right over here. Now I've already lowered my stop loss now to like right to almost break even. And now we're going to look for a couple move down and then cover into the support area right over here. So that's one trade that I'm in. Uh, I'm also in a little bit of WSO short, you know, seeing a little uh, base here on the daily chart after a gap down. Now it's trying to break below that base. So I'm looking for a move down on WSO. So these are a couple of trades I'm short right now. Uh, but overall, it's been great. You know, one of the awesome trades we had in the swing newsletter was Roku. This was a fantastic trade. Guys, look at Roku. It's at $70, right? $70. We call this long in our swing trading newsletter right here at $44, right? We got out half at 50. Uh, we got out a third position at 51. We got out another one around like $60. And then the rest we got out like right over here. So we had about a $15 move from our call in the swing newsletter so again if you're not in there email info at live traders.com take a trial you know you don't have to pay for it just come in check us out but i'm, pr I'm pretty sure you're not you're gonna renew and you're gonna stay because everybody does it's just uh, it's a great way to you know supplement income you don't have to day trade every single day you can take trades like this and still make a really good amount of money and you know that's my focus that's what i do you know uh, we do a lot of options trades too the private twitter account like here's another one we did yesterday so check this out. Yesterday I posted um, Amazon bear call spread. This is an options trade. If you don't know how to trade options, don't worry about it. I teach it. So Amazon bear call spread, right? We shorted it for 95 cents a credit, which basically means that if you had um, 10 contracts of this bear call spread, you basically got $950, right? You basically got $950 right 
in your account on Amazon. All that Amazon had to do is not break and go higher than my first price. So I showed it the $732 calls. So let's go on Amazon. And at that time, Amazon was trading at 1680, 1680, right? So the bet that I made was that Amazon shouldn't go up above 1732 in two days. It literally had two days. If in the next two days, Amazon doesn't go higher above 1732, we basically get to keep and collect all of that $950 premium in our account. And if Amazon goes down a little bit, we get to collect all of it. So this was 95 cents of credit. And then right here, you see in the morning, um, we got out of the, uh, those, those basically calls spread expired worthless. It basically went to zero. So you got, you got to collect the whole $950 credit that you sold these call spread for. And uh, you got to collect all of that. So, you know, that, that's kind of income trades that we uh, do in the private Twitter account um an intel expiration and that's a great way to make money because most options end up expiring worthless they go to zero so if you're shorting options you know how to do it using spreads you can make a good amount of money and even if amazon didn't go down even if it just kind of like wiggled around here went sideways as long as it didn't go above here in two days we got to collect all of that so you know that's this example of uh sort of trades we do we do some call spreads uh, we just bought some puts in general. We do some stocks trades like ENS, you know, WSO, PRLB. Those are all stock trades. Um, so, you know, those are kind of stuff that I want to review. Um, but overall, not a bad week. You know, could be, could have been better. Could have been better. Had some nice trades. But overall, market is kind of what made the whole week. And uh, in extremes like this, that's what your focus should be. All right. That's what your focus should be in extremes. Playing the market playing these extremes right buying on extremes selling it over here all right and you could kind of foresee that if I open up my internals layout so right now you see here we look at my internals layout all right this is the internals layout uh, this is the McKellen oscillator so this was our overbought level right and you see here on the McKellen oscillator we kind of hit the extreme overbought levels right look at the last time we hit that overbought level right over here got a nice decline and then right over here, it hit over uh, oversold levels, right? So again, I don't use oscillators to make trades, okay? I don't. But these are market internals. That kind of tells you the breadth of the market. So I like to also time it with a couple of these things like this, all right? So that's the trade recap for today. I was actually supposed to be like a five-minute video. <laughs> you know, that's why I don't make videos, <laughs> you know, because I, I think about making like a five minute video, um, seven minute video, and it always ends up being like 20, 25 minutes. But, you know, at least one thing, you know, I always over deliver. Right. And I hope you guys so learned something there, you know, from these patterns, from kind of my thought process behind all of this. I uh, I hope you guys learned something. All right. I'm going to try and do more videos because it seems like Jared's taken over the YouTube channel keeps putting out videos i feel left out so i said you know what let me uh, let me go ahead and make a video too so have a good one everybody and uh, i'll catch you probably in another video take care